like to call to order the uh, Charter Township of Oxford Planning Commission regular meeting for Thursday, September 14th, 2017. Uh, will you please rise and pay your respects to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll we'll call. Noted. Noted. Thank you. Uh, item four, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the regular planning commission meeting for the Charter Township of Oxford, Thursday, September 14, 2017. Support. Been moved by Mr. Curtis and supported by Mr. Spiz. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Item five, approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the regular planning commission meeting minutes for July 27, 2017. I'll second. Been moved by Mr. Curtis, seconded by Mr. Nold. Discussion, please. <coughs> Yes, Ms. Um, I had said before that the minutes by law had to show the original version and every other draft that's done with it. The first draft looked like this one here, and that's the one that had all the typos in it, um, you know, and a lot of errors, and that's the one we denied for that reason. Now, if you look, my first one does not say draft. It doesn't say anything like that. That's what we got. They have to say draft. They have to be dated, the version. The second one, now that we got it, is substantially you know, different. Yeah, that, that second version we have is substantially different than the first one. And uh, it, it has to, by law, and I brought the, I brought the law, you know, each version has to be marked. And that second version we have has to be written with the first version with all the changes. Because otherwise you're destroying the public document. That document was presented, it was passed out, and now it's all of a sudden disappeared and you've replaced it with the other document. And so that's, you know, I have the law right in front of me. I concurred with the, you know, the planners. And so that's where my problem is. We can't just throw one version out and replace it with the Any other discussion? And if you'd like, I can read the specific section from the finishing statute. No, I, I read it as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need to make another change that identifies the first version as the first version, and the second version as the amended version. Right. In each one, we should have a, just a policy. You know, I looked at our bylaws, too. You know, and our, our bylaws said that we shall make, you know, minutes, and the person that's doing it should be designated by the Planning Commission. And it says a complete restatement of all motions, a complete record of all transactions, findings, and determinations. And that was my problem with the minutes before, when we had that long discussion with the planner about what we were going to do with the golf course properties and how we were going to, you know, change some of these areas in the master plan. And, Zoning, none of that is indicated on the record, and those are findings. The board made a finding and a determination. It doesn't have to be both. We had a direction and we sent it forward, and that needs to be you know, documented by our own bylaws. You know, a lot of people go back and forth about what makes a decision, but you know, decision, finding, determination, it's all the same thing. And, and we spent a lot of time in that meeting making those decisions so that other planning commissioners that weren't here up to speed. You know, so that, that's why it's important to have a record that's at least good enough for somebody to understand what the consensus was of this body. Um, and now I can't vote to accept those minutes because now I'm with law. Okay. I re um, read the bylaws as well. I also took it to uh, uh, Curtis Wright and Supervisor Dunn. They stated that the minutes and the synopsis of our meeting and the minutes of the synopsis that's contained 
in these mints is going to continue to remain the way it has been for years. There won't be any changes in terms of the synopsis of our mints. Um, in terms of the items that we discussed with the master plan, we did discuss talking about the master plan and it's my understanding that everything that we discussed and agreed upon was taken down by Matt and we could incorporate it into those master plan areas. So that is the record, correct me or not. Right, Matt? That's been included? Yeah, well, I have, I mean, I took notes. Um, and for a master plan discussion where it's more of a workshop type thing, I wouldn't expect every little detail to be taken. Uh, the a planning commissioner who was absent should be able to get an idea of what was discussed about, but to have every um, every detail taken down, I don't think is necessary for a workshop. Right, I'm not saying every detail, but what I'm saying is that it's like any basis of what happened or that it was even discussed and that those details, you know, would be summarized. So somebody stepping in wouldn't know how much time the public spent and the board spent and what the overall conclusion was. And then, um, you know, the, the, the township board doesn't direct this planning commission. The planning commission is a separate board that's not supposed to be under the control of any other board here at the township. So the minutes are our choice and how we represent, you know, what we've done on this level to the citizens when they come and speak, they expect it to be accurate. And, you know, another factor to consider is that, you know, they're summarizing what people said and the, the, the residents don't have a right to speak before we approve the minutes if the words are wrong. You know, so we're going to be approving minutes here, which when I look at what the minutes say is not what the people say. And they don't have a, a chance to fix it. So I think we just really need to uh, be more careful and take better minutes. And I don't see why we wouldn't want to. Any other discussion? No. Seeing none, uh, Roll call. Roll call. Oh, that's me. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I've been away for a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Roll call. Commissioner Berger. Well, I'm confused because I don't know the validity of everything that just was stipulated. <laughs> I don't know all the exact rules on this record. Parties kind of make conversation with me. I offered to read the law. I, you know, I didn't have a problem with what anybody said. I just don't personally know myself. So I guess the motion is to approve it. That's not as terrible as that right now, right? Correct. I was not at the meeting. That's correct. So I'm having a little trouble because when I read them, I can only read what I see in front of me. So I guess I'm going to say no. I'm not sure. Okay. Commissioner Curtis? Yes. Commissioner Knoll? Yes. Commissioner Rosner? No. Commissioner Spiz? Yes. Commissioner Young? No. No. Well, I wasn't at the meeting either. So, I guess I'll vote no. But it doesn't pass. Or three. Okay, so what I'll do is make sure that the minutes are recorded and changed to reflect the first draft, second draft, um, and reread them again to make sure that the master plan information was in there, but not everything that we designated because they he's already got that in there. Right, I think okay. I just need references that have documented somewhere and we don't look for it. Right. Uh, approval of the minutes item B. I'll make a motion to approve the regular planning commission meeting minutes for August 24th, 2017. It's been moved by Mr. Curtis, supported by Mr. Spiz. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, yeah, also that I've received a lot of uh, complaints that uh, the public that spoke wasn't represented, the comments weren't accurate. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Seeing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
those opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item six, public comments. Uh, not uh, for items that are not scheduled uh, for this agenda. So if you're here, to, yeah, if you're here to speak about the unfinished business for Rose Private Road or the modifications to our ordinance 67A, if you have something else you want to discuss, now is your time. I'll call you up. You each get a chance to discuss whatever you need to discuss. You have three minutes. Please come to the lectern, state your name uh, and your address. And we'll go from there. Yes, sir. Bruce Meyer, Mr. Delano, Oxford Township. Everybody's worried about the tree spacing and the RV parking in the township. What about putting things in a, maybe a better perspective? What about the uh, protecting the almost 400 acres that are for sale up in the northeast quadrant? That's over 400 acres right now. What's being done to, to keep it that way? Are you going to wait until you have a compost area that wants to go in and then try to fight it afterwards? You need to amend the ordinances, work on the ordinances to reflect what is necessary in that area. Do you want stockyards in that area? Right now it's an approved use. We don't want them. I don't think you want those in your yards either. So basically I've heard that there's no money for ordinance review. Well, I look at $22,503 that was spent for planning and so forth, and that is grossly under budget. So why are we spending money on RV parking and trees? Why not put it where there's a priority? You need to protect that property up there. That is basically about the only draw for Oxford. You can't be a bedroom community here because we don't have the main roads to support that. The, the township, on the other hand, spends $1.2 million, uh, basically a loss on water sewer. $1.8 million on the Elks View subdivision. The problems, because somebody rushed it through without looking at the, the details that should have been looked at to begin with. We just lost, or actually technically September 27th, I think it was, we just lost a $300,000 grant for the township. And then, with that, we just gave away $8,000 because we didn't feel like uh, pursuing it. That was at the meeting last night. Now, if you want to have ordinance review, you have a neighborhood full of volunteers willing to work free on the ordinances. Basically, a lot of it's just bringing them up to speed, matching the, the state-defined ordinances. And it's, it's not a rocket scientist uh, working on this, and it, and it doesn't need to be done that way. The state has them uh, stated very nicely. And it's just a matter of having our definitions match theirs. So how about if we start putting in some money and some importance where it's necessary? You lose that neighborhood, that northeast quadrant. You don't have the draw here. We need to protect that. People that want to buy that property up there have to know that it's protected and that their investment, huge investment, will be protected and build it out properly. I live at 1800, 1830 Cobblestone Lane, Oxford, Michigan. And I just want to bring up what I think is a major problem with the way we're operating. I have here the disc of the last two meetings. <coughs> the last meeting I spent time talking about basically the same thing that Dr. Meyer said because you know I've got property that backs up to that and I don't need to have an you know an institution. There's lots of things that could go in there that we don't really want. It's not agriculture, it's there, it's like bait, there's four hundred acres. I presented that and I got in the minutes that you all just approved, everyone up there just oh no not everyone approve this and of my presentation what I said and I didn't take a long time to say it 
29% of it, the time, was used in my name address, and the rest, the 71%. So I had 12 words, 12 words that you approved after I stood up here. And I'll read them to you. Voice dis displeasure regarding the proposed development of the acreage surrounding his property. That's one little snippet doctored up about what I said. And you can go to the previous one and it's even worse. You know, if you don't want to hear it, and then you make the minutes and you approve the minutes, certainly it's no one's job up there to take minutes. But I think if the public comes and stands in front of you and talks, you need to put what they say, not what someone interprets. And that certainly was an interpretation because my point at the, you know, was we've got a master plan. You know, in the last meeting, I was impressed because we brought up the master plan, you discussed it, and we followed the master plan. That hasn't been done very often in the past. But if you don't have the ordinances, we know if the property will get bought, lawyers will come in and they will put on it exactly what they want. They'll put in developments. You talk, we talked about the, the golf course, you know, homes, developments. Well, if the golf course is out in the rural area, it should go back, not to a development, but to homes and not high density homes, not homes on one acre surrounded by 20 acres. So, you know, I'm, I'm very disappointed in the minutes that come out. If they don't match what's said, and there's interpretations. As another example, I brought up pictures. I gave the pictures up to the board. Now, one of you don't even live in the township. You know, if, if you live out there, that's what we see. That's what we have to have. You know, we, we need to protect what's out there. That's all there is. There's no more. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, sir. New subject. Okay. I'm still Bruce Myers, Delano, Country Township. We seem to be having a problem with the minutes. Right now, your recording secretary has way too much at stake in the game. And I don't know if she really wants to put that much liability on the line, being a, a deputy uh, uh, a supervisor. Right now, the minutes are not impartial. The minutes are inadequate. My speech last, last uh, meeting was summarized in basically three lines. I had a whole three pages tight. It was not single space, don't worry. And I also requested that those be put in the meeting, or minutes. They are not in the minutes. Basically, your, your group speaks through the minutes. It's not well done. I've heard somebody say, well, we can use a video. But video does not count in court. Not on your side, but anybody going after you, it counts. So we need to get a, a real minutes, maybe a real stenographer. I think it'd be less expensive than a uh, salary of a, a deputy uh, uh, superintendent, and also somebody who's not going to be calling the police just because we brought up a subject that she doesn't like. Obviously, we were not intimidating you, but maybe she felt that. And to have the police called in inappropriately to intimidate us up here speaking is inappropriate. So basically, uh, it doesn't show everything that happened. It doesn't show the changes. As uh, Ms. Rosier said, you know, the draft and <coughs> the things have to be superimposed on each other and mark what, is, is, uh, uh, what the differences are from one uh, draft to the other to the final one. My statement was not included. However, there, the statement that is in, the, in the, uh, the minutes for the last meeting is not what I said. And I object strongly to somebody putting words in my mouth that way because they have that was an offensive remark that's in there. I did not say that. I object to that. So that needs to be corrected. Basically, we also had FOIA violations that we need to address. A lot of the people here, including myself, are supposed to be on a list 
to receive notices of the meetings. And basically, I got a phone call today from one of the neighbors saying that there's a meeting today, and basically what was on there. I finally uh, received an email from uh, uh, Mr. Wright, basically giving me a copy of uh, the agenda for today. I shouldn't have to wait for that. I shouldn't hear from neighbors first. That should be coming. All the neighbors should be receiving the, uh, that have sent in the FOIA for information on this, should be receiving this ahead of time. I also saw where uh, Chairman Young felt that he was uh, being uh, attacked, and I'm not sure where that came from. Um, it sure was not me. Now, you have done nothing to go out and overtly harm the horse country out there. I will admit that. However, I'm looking at a lot of inaction, and we need to do things to protect that country out there. I know I just went back to my first speech here. But we need to protect that. So please. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to uh, item number seven, commissioner's comments. Mr. Curtis. I have none. Mr. Knowles. I have none. Mr. Berger. I have none. I said this before, I have some comments I wanted to make about the email I received today regarding what was said at the last meeting regarding the ordinance review, but I can um, defer that to the ordinance review section um, later on that. I have none. Public hearings, we have none this evening. Uh, item number nine, unfinished business. Uh, proposed private road. Um, is the applicant here, House of Providence, Jason Dunn? Yes. Okay. Want to come up and give us a little um, discussion on what you're planning to do? Sure. Good evening. Might apply. Good evening. Uh, Jason Dunn, House of Providence. Uh, last time we were here about I don't know, six, eight weeks ago, somewhere in there, uh, we proposed a private road um, off of Davison Lake Road, and uh, we left there with some unfinished business. So in the last few weeks, we have um, wrapped all that up with the extension pond, uh, got all the approvals through our property maintenance and uh, agreements, all those different things that happened, uh, made sure we had approvals through Lapeer County, uh, with our engineers, city planner, all those different things that we make sure that we met all the ordinances to be able to uh, do the private road. Hmm. Have you reviewed the comments from the consultants and our staff? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, why don't we review those now? Uh, Mr. Sharp? Yes. Um, as far as the engineering review of this goes, uh, we have no objections to the, uh, the plans as they were proposed. Uh, a couple of the items that were uh, outstanding from the last time uh, were in regards to the uh, detention pond along Davidson Lake Road. Uh, the applicant did re redesign that pond. They resubmitted the plans to the Lapeer County Road Commission, and they do have uh, support from the Lapeer County Road Commission there. Uh, the pond itself exceeds the township requirements, so therefore, from a township perspective, we have no objections to that. Um, the rest of the roadway, they're meeting the proposed cross sections that are required for the uh, for the engineering design standards, with re and with regards to horizontal and vertical curves, that meets those requirements. Um, there is not a safety path required at this time for just a private road, but should a development accessing the roadway occur in the future, they would be required at that time to put it in. Uh, there is no public sanitary or water main, and again, we're just looking at the, the private road aspect of it. So we have no objections to. Uh, to the uh, applicant's request for private road. Okay. Um, yep. For the engineer. Um, the stormwater management part, uh, I'm just kind of going through the audit of the ordinance. I actually, I have a couple of general questions, too. Um, kind of directs where my questions are related. 
you know, when I see the application that was filled out, it says it is a land improvement application. Is that what's normally filled out for private road? The land improvement application? Yeah. Uh, for the private road, that I mean, every project needs to have a land improvement application filled out. Okay. For any type of earth movement or anything. Yeah, our ordinance over and over says the words, you know, the, the packet for the, the private road. You know, private road application, private road application. The application, you know, for private road. Do we have a private road application? We don't. So it's not specific, not a detailed form. I just generally ask that the private road application is generally getting approval from the engineer to build the road and then they need the land improvement application, they need that approved, the soil erosion permit needs to be approved before they can begin any work out there. Okay, so it is where I get confused because it says it requires a private road application, so I'm looking for that application, and then I see this land improvement application. And then only one thing is checked here, it says paving. It doesn't say grading or stormwater or landscaping or anything else. It just says paving. But this is gravel, so there's no paving. But um, there also is, there's no check on the check mark about the land improvement uh, affecting the water course. So this would require a wetlands permit, according to our. This does not require a wetlands permit. No. Well, our ordinance says that if this box is not checked, it does. You're asking me questions about the application that I don't review that actually gets it completed by the township's building department there. They're, they apply to the building department for the land improvement application. Okay, so. That's what I'm wondering. When <laughs> we're proving a concept for private road, that's what we're proving today, not anything related to water or discharge or grading or anything else. But you look at grading and we're re reviewing your report. And so I'm trying to understand where your engineering report ties in with what we're supposed to do because the stormwater management provision says anything requiring submittal of plans shall conform to this. So generally the township's procedure is that the engineering plans become approved and then before any uh, developer begins any construction they need to come in and apply and have approved a land improvement permit, soil erosion permit. And then at that point they can begin grading. So the land improvement permit that has these requirements and that's related to stormwater and it says that stormwater shall be prevented or shall be created to prevent hazards and water pollution related to runoff from the proposed development and that any alteration shall not create a water pollution condition for adjacent or downstream property owners. Who makes that determination? It's a that it would be the building department's decision based on our reviews and our recommendations from our letters. So when you so if I'm saying that it's a that we're recommending approval, then they are assuming that we have looked at those those items there, and they're going to you know base their their judgment and their decision on the fact that we have recommended approval of the plans. Okay, so you reviewed this already for stormwater management. We've reviewed the plans that were submitted for stormwater management. Yes. So you're making the determination that stormwater that leaves that property will not possibly create a water pollution hazard for adjacent or downstream property owners. We're looking at the stormwater, the, the quantities of stormwater, the detention ponds and so forth, and the stormwater quality refers to the soil erosion permit. They have the proper soil erosion uh, measures in place on the plans, so assuming that they install it properly, <laughs> yes. Okay, because I'm looking at stormwater management, it says, you know, 2278.1 and then 4, that we shall... Well, they're talking about the pollution, they're talking the, that, I believe what that application is saying is pollution being considered sediment, um, you know, those types of runoff that could get into a county drain or in a wetland or something like that. We're not looking at the, you know, the, uh, the types of materials that may be in there, if that's what you're going at. Oh, it says stormwater storage yeah, facility shall be designed to prevent water pollution related to runoff from the proposed development. Correct. And so you made that determination that there will be no water pollution. From Correct. No sediments or anything like that. That's the language that's used for the soil erosion applications. So water pollution is sediment. It's nothing else. 
many things, but we're not looking at it in terms of those, those other items. Okay, it says we're supposed to, that's why I'm confused. Where, it says we're supposed to look at it. We, planning commission, because it says we have to look at this ordinance. It says we have to approve it based on these conditions. From what I've been submitted, and from what I've seen, and from communication with the DEQ, they have not been given an all clear, and there is a potential for <coughs> from runoff from this property. So how can the plans be designed to prevent that if we're not clear? I can't possibly make a decision on it until someone can tell me, you know, in writing, uh, a certified engineer or a DEQ or environmental specialist that says there's not a potential for increased likelihood of pollution from <coughs> discharge from this property. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but in making this decision about the plan for the private road and its construction and the type of construction it's designed, we're not approving him to move the soil. But, He's got to submit uh, but this is information the from the Michigan Department that says that land is okay to be cleared and to be moved or it has to be remediated or whatever, remediated. Uh, before says, that happens, we're not giving him that permission to do that stuff. It does. It says, you know, any plan improvements that have plans shall confirm, you know, conform. And today we're approving the plans. We're not issuing a, a, a permit to actually move well. We're approving the plans. And it says in our ordinance that we shall approve the plans based on a set criteria. Ordinance 67A and 108. <coughs> and the rest of these, including this one. This is one of the first planning commission. <coughs> now, any land improvement plan shall conform with, and it says stormwater management shall be designed to not have any potential for pollution of downstream property. And that's the point. I've been given enough information to know that there is a potential. So I'm stuck there. At what point is someone going to say, no, this doesn't apply to me when, I, when it says it does? That's where I'm having it. Did the attorney say that in his letter? The attorney said he can't move well, but the attorney didn't reference it. We're not. The attorney also updated that letter, and I haven't seen the update. <coughs> so, and that's where, I'm, that's where I'm stuck. They know you looked at 2278, and I don't have a clear statement from an engineer or an expert that says that there's no potential for downstream uh, contamination. And my expertise, we're, we're certified stormwater operators, so we're looking at it from a soil erosion perspective. If you're getting into any uh, other types of contaminants that could potentially be in the soils and so forth, that is beyond my scope of what you know I'm, I'm allowed to review and so forth. We're looking at it from just the runoff from the site, making sure that the sediments and so forth are not going to clog up any drains, that they're not going to you know harm any any wildlife or anything like that but as far as the materials and so forth that may be in that particular soil or something i am not certified to to answer those that's questions. what i want to find out so it's safe to say that your review of this really is about sedimentation and flooding it has nothing to do with the actual contamination potential correct it's absent that could potentially be in those soils that is not for ours is strictly for drainage design roadway design and for you know, like I say, soil erosion, sediment, that's what we, those are the items that we review on behalf of the township. Okay. Uh, Carlisle Wartman. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is uh, the second review that we've done for the private road. Just to recap, at the last meeting that we reviewed this, the planning commission postponed uh, action on this item to address stormwater management as well as environmental concerns. The applicant has resubmitted showing a detention pond on the site. Um, we deferred the calculations to the township engineer. He has stated that it's in excess of what is actually required. Uh, being that the private road is primarily an engineering matter, um, we have reviewed both the zoning ordinance and the engineering standards and find that it complies uh, and satisfies all of those requirements. So we do recommend approval of the private road. Okay. I had a question on, there's a sign on, there's a 
sign that says uh, informational sign. Which I think on page four of this thing, plan that we have. And then there's a road sign. What is that informational sign? Got my review. I didn't see it anywhere in the review, and, and there's a sign on that same plan. So I want to make sure we're actually approving the sign. Any sign that comes in would have to be would have to go through the building department. Um, that would not be reviewed at this time. It would have to meet the zoning ordinance standards. I maybe the applicant can address that, but for now it's just the private road. No no sign application has been submitted. The only thing I think is it's on the site plan. I want to make sure that there's no sure. input. The only sign that nobody applying that there's actually a sign approval for that. Okay, the only sign on the site plan plan is from Lapeer County, so that is the stop sign. It has to be there for the private road, and then also the name of the road has to be there. So that's the Pierre County's uh, jurisdiction ordinance is that what has to be there to show the road. So yeah, we would not review that. Any uh, any entrance signage would have to go through the building department of the township. I had a question on road length. Just and it's just that it's really hard to read the plans. Well, you know, when I looked up on the computer, you said it's 630 feet, but it looked to me like it was 700 plus 130, like 730 plus 108. Yeah, I measured it from the uh, the entrance off the Davidson Lake center point there to the center point of the cold set. Measurements that are on the the plan then showing within the roadway. There's one that says 730 and one that says 108. What were those measuring? That's probably the, the proposed property line, which we're not uh, reviewing at this time. They just put that potential property splits on the site plan. Right. For all of the property lines, all of the dimensions, the side, the rear, and the front. So I measured it using an engineering scale separately from those dimensions that were on the site. Well, so I'm wondering, because those dimensions say 730 and 108. So, and it says it, it's complying as the road limit. 730. 730 and 108. Yeah, we're, I mean, we just measure right now, it's about 600, and that's the center of the cold set. Yeah. yeah. So the, the ordinance standard is less than 1,000. Right. Um, either way, it meets the zoning ordinance standards. Well, I'm just wondering if the numbers on the plan are wrong. No, I don't, they're not. They're not referencing the road line. Those are referencing the, the dimensions for the lot splits, the future lot splits. The frontage of the lot splits. All of the all of the line all of the property lines. So for a site plan, you have to show you know each time a site occurs or. or Jots down, you have to show that dimension. That's what that's showing. Okay, so that means probably the long first section of the road. It just seems that there's a big discrepancy between 630 and 20. I'm not sure where that was. In terms of the actual, you know, I see lots created on the thing. We're not looking at the configuration. Not yet, no. Purely the private road, the lot split will come for a separate review, not in front of the planning commission because it's not required, but in front of the lot split committee. We'll do a separate review for that, but right now it's purely the private room with that room. So the flat showing are just something that's Yeah, those are just potential. Yeah. Oh, feel that? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I blew it up a little bigger for myself, too, because I, I looked at that earlier, and I looked at that science thing. Um, I, I figured it out now that the 730 feet goes through the cul-de-sac, and there's a uh, turn in the property description. And then when you go further down in the property description, the next uh, dimension of that line on that uh, lot line would be 1,363.11 feet. So it, it takes you the 730 through the, yeah. the cul-de-sac, and then it takes you a third. It takes you 1,363 feet uh, due south. So I, it took me a second to find it. I just yeah, because when I saw the that, that, that clarifies it better for me too. Yeah, thank you. So yeah. And that sign says directional sign, it says informational sign. Yeah, one did say informational. That's right. I saw that too earlier yeah. today when I was looking at it. Informational may be implying the street name, yes. um, but any you know any monument sign or any ground sign related to the de development itself will have to proceed through the building department. And then yeah, one other last comment on that is on the roadways page four, the very top of your report. And it's just, it says that it, it's gravel, but if it changes to, I think your words were multiple family or non-residential use, the ordinance says if it changes 
to anything other than single family residential. I think that's the different meaning than, you know, multiple family or non residential. The words in the, the ordinance is, you know, anything other than single family residential use. That would be a deed restriction, right? Yes, that's correct. And I believe it is within the, uh, the draft deed that it will only be used for single family purposes. I just want to make sure that it doesn't be just different. Okay, Chief, anything? Mm -hmm. Is there anyone in the public wishing to comment on the presentation you just heard or any discussion? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, committee. My name is Wade Fleming. I live at 3820 Victoria Court in Troy, Michigan. So why am I here? I, first of all, I appreciate your service. I've been where you are. I served in Troy City Council about nine years, currently serving my secretary with Commissioner Spiz, with Commissioner's Oakland County. But more relevant to this discussion, I'm chairman of the board of Promise Village, home for children, a home for neglected and abused boys in Rose Township, just a few miles from here. I've been on that board for 15 years. I remember very well meetings like this concerns about this home for boys. We have 70 acres. We have a 12 stall horse barn. We have an indoor riding arena, an outdoor riding arena, and a 6,500 square foot home. We've been there for over 15 years. When we wanted to move in, the residents, and rightfully so, I understand, it's an unknown. Everybody says a home for children is good. We need these things, but not in my neighborhood. So we, we were met with tremendous resistance. But I have to tell you, after 15 years, we've had hundreds of boys that come through that home. We've changed lives. Our society is upside down. We don't put money into early problems with children when children are hurting, neglected, and abused. We wait until they get in trouble with the law, and then they go to juvenile delinquency. And we have that in Oakland County. That's really a precursor to prison. What House of Progress is trying to do and wanting to do, and I know I've been to their facility in Detroit. I know Jason and Maggie, I know their heart. We have shared information on how we do our program with them. They've shared information with us. I have toured the facility that they're proposing out here. This road split is just one obstacle. There are going to be many others, I'm sure. But I encourage you to look at the big picture because you're going to get a lot of negative kickback here. I don't envy your position. I've been there. It's tough. But anything you can do for a child to turn a child's life around is never wasted. And I know that's what they're trying to do. It's a faith-based, non-denominational program. And they're helping girls now. They want to help boys and men also handicapped, special needs kids. But I know what you're going through. I know the angst that you're having. I've been there. I've been there as a board member. But I'm telling you, if you go to Rose Township now, we are we are on a small dirt road right up at the Terrace and, and Radley Lake, 70 acres. We've had no problems with the neighbors. We are well respected in the community. We are in the business of changing lives. And I get paid nothing for it's just like you get paid nothing for what you're doing. You're very, very little. It's, it's a labor of love. So thank you for, for hearing me out. And I just encourage you to do what you can to expedite this process because time is money. And I've been there, I know. And I know about changing lives for kids. And this is really one of the most important things we can need to do as a society. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yet, uh, 1524 East Oakwood Road, Oxford, Michigan. I stood in front of this commission 20 years ago, and my builder made an error 
uh, on my property and put my property, my barn, about two, two and a half feet uh, from the property line, it was supposed to be at uh, 50 feet. I was told by this group that an ordinance, the rule is a rule, and I had to take a section of my barn out. I'm very sensitive to the social impact for children, but this has nothing to do, this commission is not entitled to make decisions based on social values. There are guidelines, there are master plans, and these needs to be adhered to. So I appreciate the comment of the gentleman, but you have not to vote on your emotions, but on what the ordinance and the guidelines allow you to vote on. Thank you. Bruce Myers, Delano, Oxford Township. That was a very nice presentation that the gentleman gave. Um, I'm not sure what that has to do with putting the road in now. That seems to be jumping ahead in perceived plans and really has no place at this meeting at this point. Exactly. Now, I'm looking at the, the road plan as it's presented and I'm hearing that there needs to be permits and so forth, why is there seem to be a driveway or uh, an entrance onto Davidson Lake Road at this time? It seemed like it was put in within about the last month. There's an entrance onto the road. I don't see where the pier approved that um, because it's an east-west road at the north side of the township that, uh, or in the county. It's like that's their decision, but I don't see where they approved that. I don't see where we or this board has approved putting a, a driveway through there yet. Um, how did this happen? What brought this all on? Is this something that's permitted or is this a jumping ahead of the game before approving a driveway or a roadway? So, anyone else? My name is John Baker, 5855 Barber Road, Metamore, and I represent landowners who own land contiguous to the hop property. Um, there's a number of issues that seem to be bouncing around that may or may not have been addressed. Um, and I'd like to bring up a few issues. Uh, it's going to take me more than three minutes. <laughs> um, first off, the whole procedure, as we perceive it, is gone backwards. Um, you're proposing to approve a road for parcels of land that have been legally described by a surveyor as parcels A and B or whatever the name or number of the parcels are. Those parcels don't exist legally. Uh, they're just parcels of land owned by the same person who owns the rest of the land. What happens is when you grant the easement, uh, it just goes back to the original owner as a legal man. It's gone. It merges back into the ownership. So we've got a problem with enforcing the maintenance agreement in particular and the easement agreement. The second issue is that you're talking about approving a private road, but you don't know what the use is going to be of that private road. According to your ordinance, the use of the property around that ordinance 
around use of the road and the property around it can only be used by single family residences. The gentleman previously speaking, whom I never met before or heard at this meeting before, uh, implies that there is going to be some other kind of use, which if I read the ordinance correctly, it's uh, a foster care family type of use that could be used possibly. But that issue hasn't been considered by the Planning Commission. But you're talking about a road or something. You should be talking about the use issue first, the lot split issue second, and the road simultaneously with the other issues. Otherwise, you're walking into a dark hole because you don't know what the use is. Now, I could go on, but just for purposes of clarity, the petitioner did sign an application for land improvement. So it's land improvement application. And as previously pointed out, the only box that's checked is paving. Uh, Stormwater is not checked. But now the applicant has dealt with stormwater, but he hasn't amended his application for land improvement. So the public doesn't know anything about this unless they come to the meeting. It seems to me that the applicant needs to amend his application to address the issues because the issues have enlarged in scope for the retention pond, uh, for the different sizes and parcels of land, uh, uh, and in one instance I heard or maybe read in the newspaper that uh, he's planning on having 7,000 foot homes instead of the original 3,000 or whatever it was. Well, that, that is not in the application. The application for land improvement has to be amended to address those issues. And when we're dealing with the land improvement ordinance, it's very clear that land improvement permit shall be shall no land improvement permit shall be uh, issued unless the applicant has obtained the necessary uh, and applicable uh, approvals as follows. And what follows is approach permit county road commission or the State Department of Transportation, Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Permit, National Pollutant Discharge and Elimination Permit, Road Plan Approval Required. So, we're, we're dealing in a situation where the Commission not aware of what the use is going to be for this road. The ordinance clearly says single family residential use. And what we read about in the paper is that there's going to be uh, 
foster care home here, long and short of it. And that's not permitted by your ordinance. So I think the commission needs to maybe get together with the attorney and sort through uh, some of these issues. Um, I know that uh, at one point in time, the attorney had reviewed uh, a number of documents, but he said uh, in his letter to you that you should not go forward until he has a chance to uh, make the changes required. I don't know if that has been done. So uh, those are just some of the issues that we feel have to be addressed before you can proceed further. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> before anyone else from the public speaks, I do have to say that we are discussing the private road only on a piece of private land. We're not discussing the use of this particular land because that's not in front of us in this meeting at this time. Is there anyone else in the public wishing to speak to this? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get you next, sir. Oh, well, I guess you're either or. Go ahead, Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. Good evening. My name is Barbara Blanick. I live at 3601 Barbara Road in Oxford. I just wanted to bring up one other item in your consideration for the road. And that is, I was in contact with uh, Ms. Beth Schroeder, who's in charge of the uh, Road Commission in Lapeer County that's uh, giving approval for this road. And she has said that although the plan submitted by House of Providence, uh, they agree with the plans, there's uh, a long list of items that have to be uh, completed before Lapeer County will approve this uh, road and give a permit. And one of the most important ones is the DEQ, which has cited the fact that the entire 118 acres of this property has, uh, in many places, lethal levels of lead. And until they can remediate all of this, Lapeer County will not give a permit for the road. And I just want to make you aware of that. Hi, my name is Ricky Gianetti. I am a resident at 1850 Oak Trail in Oxford. I have spent most of my life in the Oxford and Metamora area. Um, I grew up in Metamora, been there since 1987. I am a contractor. I've been doing this every day since I was 14 years old under the family business. I've been trained by my grandfather and father who have been doing this since the early 1950s. Uh, a lot of people are jumping the gun here. Um, as one of you just said just a moment ago, you are here to approve a road. Um, House of Providence, Jay and Maggie, can put this road in. They are meeting all the requirements of the township. Um, it doesn't matter whether or not they got the DEQ straightened out now or the road commission has an issue to permit. They're seeking approval from the board. Before they can do this, before we can stick a shovel in the ground, they will have to meet all those requirements. This has nothing to do with your approval of putting in the road. They cannot put in this road or get the permits without complying. You're mere, or you're just here to approve the road, whether or not you guys want it or not. Okay, all the rest will be handled. You know, soil erosion permits will be pulled. They'll be, you know, in compliance with the Pier County and everything, so will DEQ permits be pulled. It's this very typical to get an approval before you get all your permits. This is nothing out of the ordinary. Um, lead levels have been handled, are being handled. There is not lethal amounts of lead in the ground here. So that is being addressed. And like I said, everybody is forgetting the picture here of approving to put in a road. Now, if they go to put up the Taj Mahal, your building department's gonna say no. It doesn't matter, you know, what he, you know, what people think or what the newspaper says, it's all hearsay. 
the building department will review the building plans and say yay or nay when the time comes. You're merely here to approve a road. And the purpose of this road is not to have cars flying up and down it. It's access for the fire department. You know, it's It's got a cul-de-sac for the purpose of a fire truck to be able to turn around. That's why it's not a straight road with a dead end. It's for the fire department. So you know, I'm just kind of trying to educate on the procedures, you know, and just explain, like I said, everybody's jumping the gun here. You're merely here to approve a road, and all ordinances, you know, in the process will be adhered to, and all permit, everything in the permit will be adhered to, and whatever DEQ says, whatever Soil of Roses says, that will all come later. You know, but right now you have to approve the road, get the plans drawn, and then we go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim Eunice. I live on Gardner Road. I'm an adjoining uh, landowner to Ha. And I've been watching what's been going on there now for months. Long story short, this past weekend, they were brush hogging. It's dry. There's a fog of dust coming off the ground. We all know it's contaminated with lead. Been hunted on since 1965. And up until, up until a couple of years ago, the hunting ceased because it changed ownership. I, I'm asking you people to take a look at this lead thing. Everybody seems to be walking around it. There's letters flying. It's not there. Never was there. It could be there. It's there, people. When the brush hogging was going on the other day, it was a fog. When the sun shined into it, you could see it. So that means there's got to be some lead flying around when they're working this property, so to speak, with the brush hog. I don't understand why we don't get serious about the lead. The DEQ is serious. They've already told Hop they got to come up with a plan, show where it's at, how it is, and then the paperwork shows in the distance they would come in and check it. How can we do a road knowing full well it's full of lead and it's going to start washing and it's all about the runoff, it's all about the dust, it's all about... I can't understand how anybody can put kids on property that's loaded with lead. Would anybody here want to put their grandchildren or children on a piece of property like this that's covered with lead? I don't, you would? Well, good for you. Oh, wait, I, I didn't interrupt you. Oh, you asked So all I'm saying is, we need to get serious about this lead and the runoff that goes with it. Because once we disturb the soil, it's not going to be what it was, and we know there's many people in the neighborhood that know exactly where all the shooting took place, the heavy shooting, what they call the European hunt. There's a lot of lead there, folks. And it's uh, what the uh, DEQ has said, they want the whole 118 acres combed over, if you will, and show the samples. So why can't we proceed with that first before we go with a rope? Because once we tear it up, bulldozers will be in there, just smear it all around. That's exactly what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on a topic that has not been covered yet? <laughs> yes, sir. He asked a question, so I wasn't going to say anything, but I'll, I'll come up. I'm Jim Smither, I live in Rochester. Um, I think that uh, you can bring things down on you that you really don't expect to. If you have dust coming on your house from House of Providence and it's been going there, I think your property needs to be checked. No, no, let's go uh, on so south. Yeah, and then, we got to keep the comments correct. And then there's 118 acres. Um, there's, there was more than 118 acres. So the, the part that has probably, if there is lead, there's a, a, there's a big hill that they used to shoot into. Now, they use steel shot. So most of the, the stuff out in the, uh, the fields, the 118 acres, has very, very little lead. It's all steel shot from 
I can't remember the year in the 60s where they, they made everybody stop using the lead, but um, the place where most of the lead is is on an adjacent 20 acres that, that that's where they sighted in their guns. So if there's any lead, that would be where it is, not on this property. So. Okay. Got to caution you. We're not talking about the, you know, <laughs> the use or what the old use of what it was. Just the proposed roads that's going in on a piece of private land. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Please, Mr. Tom. Mr. Chair, I just want to address a couple of things. All the all the different pieces that have been, everyone has said they're not sure if it's been approved. Lapeer County has approved everything that is necessary. All our engineers have approved everything. City planners approved everything. We've done all the things that were requested and asked of us last time. We did everything to the T so that we would be able to come back here tonight and, and just <coughs> on the private road. And so I know everybody may not know that all the issues have been addressed, but everything's been addressed. Approvals for everybody. I know the township attorney said that any of the lead or anything like that has nothing to do with the private road. It can be approved. And uh, if we have an issue with the state, we take that up with the state, and we are doing that. We talked about that last time. Uh, we've kind of been, our opposition has created chaos uh, for us with the state and uh, has told all that we hear is so many lies. All of this is, that has been said is it's all lies and uh, has been, they're all fallacies. And so obviously when we have opposition calling Beth Schroeder from Lapeer County lying and saying we, actually Barbara Blanick said we put in our private road already and we FOIA that so we have word for word everything that happened and uh, nothing that she's saying is actually true. And uh, I have that in an email that can show all that stuff too. So, but we've done everything we can to meet every ordinances. We've met every requirement. And again, I, I thought we were about the private road, all this other stuff, I'm not sure where it came from. So yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Back to your uh, commissioner's comments. Mr. Yeah, Noel. I just have a couple. I guess I have a question, and one that may be directed to Mr. Sharp. Uh, originally, I, from when I first started to hear about this um, private road condition that we proposed to put in, I, I thought we talked about a retention basin, but not a detention basin. Or was that not true? There was never retention involved? No. Didn't it say they wanted to waiver it as the first part of the condition to on a retention base? No. Detention? No. That's my knowledge. Okay. No, I mean, I could a retention basin uh, be utilized in this A retention basin? Yeah. I mean, it's not a requirement. They, they had to provide so it's not a requirement by our ordinance? ordinance? Correct. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I mean, because a retention I read, basin, I read your a retention would be much, much larger in size. I'm assuming, but I just want to make sure. So, the rate of discharge then is based on the size of this detention basin under an agricultural rate? Yeah, based on the, the size. Is our county rate, not the Pier County rate? We actually did a calculation, and at this point, we would only require them to detain for the roadway. However, the Pier County Road Commission said, no, they have to look at a larger area that's contributing to the road. Yeah. So they are actually in excess of what the township standard would require at this time. The township block? Correct. The Pier County. Not according to what uh, we would be required. Beyond that, which maybe the Pier County required. I mean, I don't want to, maybe I said that back. Okay. Is, is the Pier requiring a larger? Yes. Detention basin. So the detention basin design that I looked at is in accordance with their correct condition. It originally was. If you look at the last plan, it was a little bit smaller. The actual approach permit. Lapeer County would not have really made an ingress part. egress okay, permit for a roadway. Is that who's approved? Who's final approval is that from the Lapeer County Road Commission? That 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 portion of roadway is under Lapeer County jurisdiction. Okay, because I read their letter and comments too completely. Okay. And then I guess uh, obviously we all know that the uh, property zoning stays the same. We're not changing anything as far as what primary uses would be allowed on the property to submit conditions of approving a private road. So that helps me with part of those concerns that I have. So thank you. Okay. Mr. Holmick? I'm going to reserve my copy. I didn't. 
Crosswick? Yeah, according to um, 108-2279C, yeah, that's what it says about the retention or detention basin. Who picks whether it's going to be a retention or detention? Picks that? Who, who makes that decision whether we're going to require a, de a detention or retention? The developer. So the developer we have different one. standards for detention and retention. Right. So if that's a developer's prerogative, which way they're going to go yes. with that. And then um, I'm reading that it either goes by that or the drain commissioner, which in this case would be Luther County, um, if their standards more stringent. So that's why we have to use Lapeer County's calculation. Correct. Because our requirement at this point, because there's no proposed development, we only looked at the uh, stormwater runoff from the private roadway, whereas the Bureau County Road Commission said, no, you need to look at a larger area at this time, even though uh, there was no proposed development. So they are meeting the, the Bureau County Road Commission standards, which exceed the township standards. Okay. Um, and so we're you know, talking about all those design standards. It's in the same 108 section ordinance that I was reading where the design has to prevent runoff. Um, that could possibly be contaminated, and so that was my concern. The DEQ did send me a copy of the response that was sent to the property owner uh, regarding their request for an NFA, which is a no further action. And they rejected the no further action, stating that um, the testing done was insufficient. And they detailed quite a bit um, of what would be required to, to get that no further action clearance. So um, it's my understanding that it was sent to the township. Um, and I'm wondering why we don't have that, because that really is pertinent information. Again, referencing 2278-1489. So that I keep getting drawn to why are only certain parts of this being addressed in this space? But not all of it, and you know the requirement that you know that we have says that we are required to follow 108. The planning commission that's right in the word that's not there. So that's you know, I'm not looking at Mr. You, Mr. Sharp. I'm just uh, making that general comment. The planning commissioner, when the ordinance for private roads, which is you know our section 11, you know says right in there that. 11C2, Planning Commission shall review according to uh, compliance with this article, the, the Oxford Design Standards, which is 108, construction specifications, and other particular applicable ordinances. This is for private road approval for Planning Commission. And that's what refers back to this stormwater management with that. And so with the information I've been provided by DEQ, um, knowing there is a confirmed existence um, at least at one time of contaminants, I can't, in good conscience, approve anything that's going to disturb that soil and then run that down the ditch right into the roadway which goes downstream and could affect other property owners. Uh, it's not natural runoff anymore. It's disturbed soil from a road, and so things are being changed. So that's why you know, I really believe this part does apply to us, because it says it does. Um, before, when we had this in front of us, we violated our ordinance because it was asking for a waiver of that detention or retention basin, and that would have required a public hearing. And that's what I was saying before, and everybody wanted to really rush this through, and we would have violated the public right to a public hearing. And so we've never really addressed that, and, and that really I still upsets me to this day that you know, it's never been stated that we did make a mistake when we did that. Um, in terms of the, the driveway, there is, I'm going to open this up. The driveway that was cut in, and I'll email this to the chair. I'm going to show that. I think I can go full screen on that. Show it down on that side. That driveway is from that property onto Davison Lake Road. It was not there before. 
previous to a month ago, that was all vegetation. <coughs> things cut down with rocks moved, and it's worked within the roadway. Um, it's my understanding, talking from LaPierre County, that LaPierre County has been notified of this, and they went down to check it out. It was not approved by LaPierre County. Um, because this is an unusual situation where we're dealing with LaPierre County on our property, it's not something I'm familiar with. Most of the time we're doing Oakland County, which has a little bit different set of standards. Um, and that was uh, Beth that was referred to before that did the uh, Bethany Schroeder. She said that the approval that they gave was just for the location of the driveway uh, or the, the private road, not this, this is separate. That was not approved. That, you know, when they were looking at the plans, it was for the location uh, and the you know, retention basin calculations and that type of thing. She said that. The approval that she needs from the township to issue any kind of a permit would be all of the things that she listed. And so what we would do tonight, which would be the concept approval of the location of the road, is not what they would need to issue a permit. We would have to go to the secondary phase and have the approval for the, uh, you know, the movement of land and, and the rest of that. So I just wanted to make that clear that this approval would not trigger an approval on their part. It takes that secondary component before they would release that. So there is that that part going on. Um, you know, so just going back to my concern, it's, it's everything else seems in order. The layout and everything else seems in order. My concern is the tie into the requirement of looking at that drainage and having nothing from the DEQ other than a report by them saying that the original port of the contamination stands. I, I can't uh, recommend approval of this. Uh, just for that reason, now, if somebody were to prevent, or present me, you know, a document that says that that's been dealt with, or that contamination is cleared, um, or it wouldn't come from that area, I would, uh, you know, have a different outcome on this. But I can't, and you know, I've seen what happens in Flint, and I've seen what happens in other communities. You know, I also have certain things like management, some other things, which I'm happy to show you my certifications for. You know, and I know that it was our responsibility to look at these things and do our due diligence. And you know, stepping back and saying, "Oh wait, it's not going to be a problem," because at this point, the DQ hasn't cleared the other things. We do have time on this to look at this element. There's no rush. Mr. Spitz? I have a similar question to the young gentleman over there relative to um, the properties in the road, and I think it's going to be more directed towards Matt. Just trying to understand, because we have a, in our packet a maintenance agreement and a easement agreement. Now, if one single property owner owns everything, do we really need a maintenance agreement for a private road? Because they're putting everything on the property. I understand there might be future things coming, but we're not here to discuss that tonight. And along with the easement agreement. So I'm just trying to get clarification on why we would need those documents. Well, if they sell, if they do end up splitting one of the properties, uh, property off and selling it to another property owner, no problem could arise if there's no easement and maintenance agreement. So, so I, if and you, I could understand that. So we have nothing in our procedure or process that would stop that from happening. So if you came in for a lot split, say you sold half the property to somebody else, and half it's on the other side of this, this private road. Nothing in our, our process or system would say, okay, now you need a maintenance agreement for that lot split or whatever, because now you're having two people. It's on one piece of one person's property. So if anybody in here decided to put a private road on their property, they would need a maintenance agreement and a and, and, and easement. I didn't think it should, the, the purpose of it was to be proactive and, and take uh, consider these into consideration in case uh, into consideration in case a property is split off and you have another property owner. Now, with no easement in place, they have no legal right then to access their, their property. Maybe I can ask it a different way then. But I understand what you're saying is that if, you, if it's all one property now and they apply for a lot split, we would look at it at that time. We double check that at that time as well. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's just a, a way to be proactive about <clears throat> access rights and maintenance. Okay. So you have, right now, the agreement says he has an agreement with himself. Then he can Okay, I've got one too for Mr. Sharp. Um, just, just to be clear though, let, let's say the approval goes through. They still have to get the necessary permits, DEQ, to disturb the land, correct? 
whatever is required. They have to have a soil erosion permit. They have to have Pure County permits. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's still some things, some some items that they have to uh, to address before they could begin putting a shovel in the ground. Well, I want to make a quick comment on that because I guess uh, you know I read Mr. Rentrop's letter more than once. Mm -hmm. Comments back, and it says in his opinion, and, and based in, in, in basically to us from the township, uh, if they did receive an application for the land improvement permit, or for approval to move soils on or off the property, or for the discharge of surface water, it is recommended the township receive input and possible direction from the NPEQ prior to the issuance of any such <laughs> I look at that, and that's from our attorney. So I'm thinking to myself, yes, before any of that can be done, they need the direction from MDEQ part of the issue and some of those uh, approvals. So what we approve tonight, if we approve uh, a private road condition only, all those other things that have to be done, and I read every opinion and every question that was asked to the attorney and what he stipulated, and that last comment right there proves to me that, or says to me, that yes, they should seek all those other um, possible permits before they can move or do anything with soil on the property. So that's, I think that's, we're not looking at that specifically tonight in the improvement of putting in a private road, but I believe in my mind all those things should be considered prior to doing that when those um, permit applications are applied for. That's from our attorney. Well, I'm reading it such that he does go in to say that the township um, is neither an owner or an operator as defined either by state or federal law. As such, the township has no due diligence requirements nor due uh, care requirements with regards to the property or, or nor must it assure our ECs are to address. So, I mean, we're at a different level from what we are as a representative to the township based on the other permits for land um, improvements at this time. So I want to be careful. That's why I was trying to be concerned, because I've never dealt with a situation where we had to deal with another body uh, from outside of Oakland County, such as Lapeer County, for those improvements. So I just wanted to make sure everything was going to be complied with. I, everything that I've read in every letter, and I read it more than once, requires a lot to make those land improvements actually happen. So I think the uh, concept of just a private road is one condition. A lot of other things have to be done also. <coughs> Prior to that happening. So. Okay. I've got um, one, two follow-up questions with that. At what point do we reconcile the lack of the check mark and the requirement for a um, wetland or water course. I can verify that with the building department. I mean, oftentimes this body will approve the plans, approve a, a site plan out there prior to the developer even uh, applying for a land improvement permit. The <coughs> land improvement permit is not required my understanding until they want to begin construction so even though they have supplied that and checked it I don't know that it is actually required at this time uh, again that is a process through the building department and I can I can check up on that tomorrow and, uh, and get back to you okay it's my I mean it should be corrected because our township said in this box you know in our ordinance if it's not checked it's required mm -hmm. and so one of the either they're asking signature put to that, you know, an affidavit from the property owner, or it has to be done, just I don't want that to, to drop off. The, the one concern I have with the attorney's letter is, uh, is a couple different things in my training, which is, is very recent. The box stops here, um, and this is one of the things that was the outcome of Flint. You can't turn your head as a public official when you know the existence of something. And in my discussions with DEQ, they told me the same thing, that you know, we personally can be held responsible if we fail to act on information. And so, I mean, she said that and wrote it down. 
you know, in writing. So, it, in that point, I disagree, um, you know, with with what the attorney said. So we might not be the, um, you know, the generator of that, but it's it's within our township, and we're we're doing things that change the use of that property. So yeah, we are responsible for it. We need to address it. And, you know, and it said we should, and you know, at the point it gets past this, go and have the DEQ, you know, come in and, and, and do this. We have to, we should, we may, who will, and what safeguard will that be? And that's why I'm saying the safeguard puts us in authority because it says so in our ordinance. So, you know, unless that provision is put in into a motion where that has to be done, you know, sign-offs have to be done by that expert, I can't defer that judgment to somebody else has to be in the motion, you know, so if there is information in the motion that, you know, that had to be signed off on by an expert who could certify that, then I would be happy, but I want some protection that it would be said it may or we should, you know, it shouldn't be that, you know, we have a duty to the residents of this town that we will. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, that one kind of addressed this one, I guess. So then, I read uh, in the opinion number two from the attorney yeah. when it said, uh, must the township ensure that the RECs are addressed and must it do the required due diligence prior to issuing a permit for a land division or a private road? And the, the answer was no. So you're disagreeing with the attorney's opinion? Because the attorney didn't reference 108. He was referencing in terms of 67. Our ordinance requires that we, the planning commission, it's one of the only times that we as a planning commission are responsible for another ordinance. We normally don't work outside of 67. In this provision of the ordinance, it required planning commission to base our approvals on 108 and 67 and any other applicable ordinance and statute. So that pulls it all together and puts it on our shoulders. Well, not. Well, that's what it says. I guess I meant like not entirely, but it does. You, you mean the planning commission show? Yes, that's what it says. I might not agree with that entirely because of what some of the other issues are that are design standards and other conditions of what private roads mean, but not everything is on our children. But well, we can defer that to our experts. That's what it says. We can use our planners and our, our engineers. You know, it says it right in there. Well, that's why I'm kind of. That's why I read every letter very carefully, um, just to make sure that we thought we were addressing all the issues at the end, so we make our decisions accordingly. Right. But I, I looked at everything that the attorney wrote. I read every opinion that the attorney wrote. And I guess there are legal counsel at some points in time, too, so I'm trying to be careful how I answer everything tonight. But, okay, I just, so you did disagree with that. My name is Mary Smiley. I live in Detroit, Michigan. Um, just for some background on myself, I hold a master's degree, which I study um, trace metal toxicology. I worked in that area for a number of years. I worked at Yale for a number of years as a research study in toxicology. I published on this extensively. And I'd like to just put your minds at ease about this if I can. Um, I have read the entire environmental report for House of Providence, and every single sample that has been taken throughout the entire property at a number of depths has come back below the direct contact limit for lead for the state of Michigan. So in my personal and professional opinion, there's no threat of lead contamination for this property based on the information that I have, which is the information that you have as well. Um, and that goes throughout the entire property. Any other commissioners discussions? Seeing none, that for a motion. I move that the Planning Commission approve the proposed private road, which is to provide access to parcel number 04-02-200 dash 006, 118.32 acres, zone AG agricultural, applicant, House of Providence, 
This approval is based upon the findings that the proposed private road meets the standards of Article 11 of the Zoning Ordinance and the Township Engineer Design Standards Manual. The Building Department of Oxford Township will notify or verify all required officials when permits are requested to ensure DEQ remediation is met. End of motion. Support. Been by, uh, excuse me, it's been moved by Mr. Curtis, supported by Mr. Spitz. Any commissioner discussion on the motion? Just um, DEQ remediation, just, I just want to elaborate what that means. Just make sure that DEQ has evaluated or we have a report from DEQ. My motion stated that the building department will notify and verify all required officials of permit requests to ensure DEQ remediation is met. Yeah, if we could um, make a suggestion on the motion that remediation may not be necessary here. Right. Um, I would suggest rewording it to evaluation. I don't know if that's something that would be accepted acceptable to you, um, that DEQ has evaluated the site and determined that there are no, there is no contamination or that there is no contamination to a level that would impact, that a private road would impact. I'd like to see evaluation put in some remediation. I'll change my motion to, uh, from remediation to evaluation, this evaluating the site to ensure uh, Proper lead levels. Don't even. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, there's been contaminants. Yeah. Yeah. Has been met. Uh, you raised four support. Any other discussion on the motion? I, I'm just. I'm a little bit confused. Sorry. Yes, Mr. Bird. I'm probably slow. I'm probably slow. You're fine. So it means the owner of the property cannot then create or move nope. any soils. So there is approval from the MDEQ regarding the fact of verification of contamination of soils on the property, right? Yes. That's what we're talking about? Yeah, so verified the soil table. I think in more general that the DEQ has evaluated it and found that it meets the, the wording, as I said, in 108, that it will not negatively adverse downstream properties. <clears throat> I can live with that, too. I like the comment, but I just want to make sure what I'm and the EQ uh, evaluates the site for the road has been met. And all other uh, applicable. Well, uh, yeah, it goes to the state. had that county state. Yeah, that was that's the road. As well, uh, contains street tree requirements for several different types of residential developments. Uh, contains street, re street tree requirements for multiple family developments, as well as planned unit developments. 
and then the um, the township subdivision ordinance contains street tree requirements for uh, residential properties, residential projects along public streets. So what's missing are street tree requirements for single family residential projects with private roads that are, aren't a part of a PUD. So we're trying to fill the gap with these proposed amendments. The ordinance review subcommittee, we looked at some example standards from other communities similar to Oxford Township uh, in terms of their street tree requirements and came up with uh, the following uh, amendments and that is to require one tree for every 50 lineal feet of frontage uh, along private streets. Uh, and we have a couple other standards. They have to be placed between the sidewalk and the curb uh, or where there is no sidewalk or there, they can't be placed within the public or the private right of way, the planning commission can approve an alternate location. Uh, and that's mostly to make sure that it's not interfering with stormwater drainage. Uh, and we also added reference section 7.5, which relates to landscape material standards. So this section talks about, uh, has standards for plant quality, tree height, caliper size. We are recommending adding a, a clause here that refers to a list of disease species or prohibited species maintained by the MDEQ, the MDNR, or the Department of Agricultural and Rural Development. And the purpose of this is because these lists are always changing, you know, new disease species are always coming up, this allows the township to uh, defer to that list to make a determination about appropriate tree species. So really we're just trying to fill the gap here with street tree requirements for single family residential development. Question? Yes. On the, on the uh, prohibited plant species, when I, when I, so what types are we talking about there? Only what is coming from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Or the DEQ. The alter, the alternate. Or the Department of Environment. Yeah, I mean, we've referenced, uh, we've referenced three. We have the DEQ, the DNR, as well as the Department of Agricultural and Rural Development. And this is just for guidance. It's not requiring it. It's just stating that the township may refer to these lists for, for guidance about proposed species. The alternate so, is to include a... So if someone did propose a species that was on the list, then we might... Well, I could come back and say we reviewed it. The DNR does not recommend uh, installing these species due to a, a disease that it has or that it's invasive. Okay. Yeah, remember the site plan when Tom Lepping was here? Yeah. The guy came in and wanted all the uh, ash trees planted on the part oh, of Oh, yeah, he went ballistic. He went ballistic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's because we had them in the ordinance. You could put the yeah. ash trees. Yeah. Well, this eliminates. Yeah, this keeps it current. Yeah, I like what it says. No, it's I currently got hope well. Because the word, the word was, the word the word was, the sound you may refer to. Yeah, and it's not, again, it's not required, but the alternate, like Jack said, is putting something specific in the ordinance and being subject to constant changes and amending the ordinance to reflect so it would continuously change. It would continuously change something in the ordinance yeah. might actually I have because yeah, like you don't reinvent the ordinance yeah. all the time. Yeah. I can look at that. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Spitz. Just a quick question. If you look at 103A, they in one of the bullet points they call out the size of the tree that you should be putting in, the minimum. Yeah. Well, you're talking about the landscape ordinance, now, right? Yeah, but it's one three, right? Yeah, then one three. If you look at under street trees, when you go into codification, it's all over the place, so it's difficult to find out exactly where it's at. But if you look at the codification, it does indicate. Street trees, general. It says spacing, which is the same as what we have recommended, and it says size. Street trees shall be three inch caliber minimum at the time of planting. So are we going to dictate the size? Of so the sorry, I just need. I want to make sure that I'm on the same. This is <coughs> which is this the zoning ordinance or is this a separate ordinance that you're referencing? It says ordinance 103. Ordinance 103. That might be subdivision. Let me land division. Land division. Okay. Uh, if you go to that one, it's actually, I have a whole bunch of That's actually a huge tree. 
46-168. So it says street trees shall be three inches in caliper <coughs> minimum at the time of planting. Um, I don't see a height requirement. Did you see a height requirement today? No, I did not. Okay, yeah, it only, it only references the three inch caliper. Yeah, my only question is do we need to add, and I don't know if three is correct or not, but do we need to add some type of size minimum that we are looking for? Well, yeah, the um, the way it's set up now is that in the draft text, so under number two, uh, existing or sorry, street trees shall meet the standards for landscape materials contained in section 7.5. So if you flip it to the ordinance, section 7.5 contains standards related to size. Uh, it's um, two and a half inches of caliper, six inches above, that's, that's how you measure caliper, and six feet in height for evergreen trees. So it's a slightly different standard, but this, uh, it would be internal to the zoning ordinance for this one. Uh, if a street tree, uh, if street trees are proposed as part of a subdivision or a, a public road here, it would fall into that other ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, but here it's all internal to the zoning ordinance. That we really need to be there. Everything's there that we need to be Everything is there, yeah. Any other feedback? All right, so the um, process moving forward would be to set up a public hearing. What I'd like to do is have a public hearing on multiple uh, of these zoning ordinance amendments. We've talked about street trees. Uh, we've set up, or we previously talked about um, non-conforming lot side, uh, side yard setbacks. I spoke with Susan Morrison today. She will be getting her comments back to me within the next week or so, yep. so we can have that on the agenda. Um, as well as, can they help me out? Are we missing any? So, well, we've already done sidewalks. Yeah. And then, well, then the, the RV one that we'll be talking about in a second. Right. Right. So let's take a look at that real yeah. quick, too. Then. We've done, so yeah, sidewalks, is, that's already been adopted. So moving on to the RVs, these were proposed by the township attorney, and I think what brought it up was several complaints that we received about RVs being parked on vacant parcels of land. So these amendments would make it so an RV has to be uh, considered an accessory use. It can only be placed on a parcel of land that has an exi existing principal structure on it. Hey, do you have a question on this one? Yeah. What if somebody owns property and just is hunting land? If What's the question? Well, somebody owns a piece of property that's on hunting land. Yes. Nobody north of here has 50, 20, even 10, because I know there's a couple of time period that they, they may be pulling an mm -hmm. RV or recreational vehicle to use for hunting season. Right, you're temporary, mm -hmm. you're allowed to do it temporarily, you just can't. What's the duration of that? Because we have we talked about that, and there's a, there's a time period. Mm -hmm. Five, yeah, mm -hmm. fourteen days. Well, recreational, it says in this case, in no case shall a recreational vehicle be stored less than five days. Uh, no, it's, no, it's, <laughs> it's 14 days. 14 days, I'm looking for it. 14 days. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's up further? Yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah, no longer than 14 days, okay. Well, two weeks, that's a long time. Well, that would mean... So the guy with the 40 going up on his last month for the week. Or even two weeks. Well, I think personally, I can't believe that they're all year round if he wants to, it's his land. Well, the, my... <laughs> And this is something I'd have to bring up with the attorney is that it's prefaced by saying parking and storage of recreational vehicles on residentially zoned or used property. So I'd have to check to see what if the intent here was to just limit it to the single family residential districts or if this includes ag as well. Well, I think what I like in the wording of this thing is what it says is it gives you some type of like, uh, enforcement value. So like say someone does complain about somebody that's had something sitting there for two months and the guy goes out, you know, the enforcement officer goes out, looks at it and says, hey, you're only allowed 14 days, so now we've got to talk and resolve the issue. I think it gives us some kind of hammer. 
Well, the other thing, man, is in 2D, it, it says parcels in there, so. Yeah. This, this is only residential. Oh, just strictly. This well, is residential, it? because okay. in SF2, in SF2, it's different. Oh. In SF2, it has to be 50 feet off the street if it's in front of the house. In ag, it can be there for a certain period of time. And if it, in residential, you can have temporary living, and it has to be such a size and permitted for so long. So as you get into the different residentials, this is attacking RVs in residential areas. You're saying it doesn't play? Right. And I guess I can understand trying to go after them, but in each case here, 2A, 3A, it says the, prop, the property must have an existing principal building. So in some of those properties, they do not right. have a principal building. So the 14 days, does that really apply? Yeah. something that doesn't have a, pro a principal building because it says in a residential must, district, which means yeah. in a residential district. Yeah, you can't take a home in Canview with nothing out of lot and put an RV trailer sitting there for more than two weeks. Or Waterstone. In SF1, where I am, you can have your motor home sitting in your front yard, but it has to be 50 feet back. That's SF1. Um, and that's where I was concerned, and I looked down and I kept seeing residential. I'm, I'm assuming this is R1, 2, and 3, correct? Well, that's not it. I think before, I don't know if I read it. Yeah, I mean, we're obviously not taking action on it tonight, but this is something I want to clarify with yeah. the attorney. Because there's several different areas right. where yeah. uh, recreational vehicles, historic recreational vehicles are hit. I, I know I, I've got one my, in my neighborhood. Yeah, because by special my previous home, I believe, was R3. You can have one when you're building. Right. But, yeah, but I think and put it on the year round. Just for clarification, if we're having trouble interpreting it here, it may be beneficial to actually list the districts. Yeah, right. um, and again, I'll have to clarify this with the attorney to see what the actual intent was. But we'll have that ready for the next meeting or before the public hearing. And again, public hearing, you don't have to take action on it, but we'll, we'll schedule it in case you do. Okay. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move to 11. Communications or committee reports. Violations report. Uh, any comments? Yeah, Jim Latoll is still on vacation. I've yet to sit down and meet with him, but there's still all those old ordinances in there. And, and Mr. Dunn said that he could get right on it, but uh, Jim is on vacation. Okay. Acreage Lot Split Committee. Well, there hasn't been any recent meetings. No, we correct. I got a question for the committee. The original for the property that we were talking about earlier, there was a 20 acre split off the house that was on there. Yes. When was that done? Um, I'd say within, I'm really bad at time element. It could have been within a year. Gotta check it. Within the last year. Why was within that the last one? year. The, the house that's on the kind of the north um, west corner was yeah, split off that lot. property just recently, which, which may be question the Land Division Act. Because it just kind of split. You can't split again for 10 years. So how did that qualify for a split? I don't remember doing that. Pardon? You sure about that? No, I don't remember doing that. Well, I, it, yeah. I remember the land division. I remember the uh, parcel that got taken on and separated out the 20 acres she's talking about. Right. No, I, I've been told uh, it was just... I just don't know the time element. We can we can go back and look at the file. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know that. actually doing that. The, I thought the, it was when the, the, maybe within the last year. It could have been within the last two years. The last what committee did it, I, I wouldn't know But if that just got split, oh, I don't know. I, I, I do remember. Right, how is it going to be splitable again? You can't split again for 10 years. Well, I'm going to back you can split. That. Well, how big was the, uh, sorry to interrupt, how big was the parent parcel? They split a 20 off. They split a 20 off originally? From one to just, just recently. And that's just, so it was just two parcels that were created? Yes. You can, I think for a parcel, a uh, parent parcel that side, you could probably do up to 15, 16 splits. No, no, not on that size. On 120 acres? Right, because it's done by it's done by acres. Right, you have the right to. She just printed this off today. Um, for a parcel 120 acres in size, you can split 15 times. Not, you can. You have to do all your splits, but then you have to wait again. Not if you haven't exhausted all of your splits. Yeah, you don't have to do it like one time and then you got to wait another no. 10 years or something. I believe that if you have that parcel 
you're allowed up in, as Matt said, 15 one, splits. Yeah. If you do one so split, then I think position. you still have another 14 splits that you can do that. within that 10-year yeah. yeah. period or something. Yeah. I believe yeah. that's so the way the land is. So, so if you had, if they had, they had 15 parcel or 15 splits to begin with, and they've done three, they have 12 remaining, um, and they have so many. I mean, I don't know how many years ago they split it. But then 10 years later, they'll get another 17. Or 29 or 16. They can't circumvent the ordinance by zoning, though. Or 29 so. or 16 of the split. Yeah. They, they can't go smaller than the 20s, which. Right, yeah, they still have to, they still have to be the, the land, land, be five, land, land division, the acreage yeah. and minimum width requirements. Yeah, that's yeah. part of it. But so why did that split not meet the requirements? <coughs> was it a disappointment? I wasn't at the meeting. Right, but that split is 20 acres gross. That includes the road, which we cannot do. Deficient in size. So, why did that happen? No, the lot, as far as I know, and we had a letter in regards to it, if I remember correctly, don't quote me on all this right now because I don't have it in front of me, but the land itself was equal to 20 acres. No, it, it says right in our ordinance it has to be net acreage, not gross. Net, you have, to, you have to take off certain things. Roadway is one of them. That property is planted right to the center of the road. The road was not deducted and some other things were not deducted. Utilities and certain things can be included, but roadway cannot. Mine's net acres is 2.5 and I own 2.75 acres of land. Well, so, good point. I, I guess we need to look. I'll have to look right. I mean, it's just like a constant. I do remember the land division. Right. And it said that I had the survey. We all have it in front of us. It says 20.0 gross acres, and it includes the road. We just created a deficient split, and you know I I had a conversation with our assessor or with our, our county, and I guess there's some letters and stuff that have been circulating about some problems with some splits that we've been having. We so Oxford, just, pardon? We Oxford, and that we get reported to the state when we do these things. So. Uh, evidently, it's not going to be on the planning commission, but we are in trouble. I know they made mine was just 2.5 minimum, and that was net eight. And I'll have to go back to the point of study, Brian. I don't know, this was in 2016? I'm going to guess. I'll be done for me. Hey, Jack, you can say what it was, Mike. What was that? Or 2916. Or 2916? Yeah. I knew it was about a year. back to some of the stuff I'm saying about procedure. It's just like, you know, it, it, I submitted a lot split check sheet from the, the state that has all that stuff in it. It wouldn't happen if we just followed the process. But we, you know, we just created a non-conforming lot. Okay, so you're going to go back into that? Not me. I will. Okay. I mean, but because we, I mean, we take our recommendation from typically the planning and zoning administration. Reports. Yes, we did. Well, but we weren't getting reports up till a certain point, and then we started getting reports. And then there was talk about it cost too much money to get reports, so we weren't. Yeah, I remember reports. that part. Okay, too, and that's what happens when we do that. But I don't know if that was in regards to this one or not. <laughs> I would rather go back and look at it to make sure I know. I don't know right now, Sydney. Right. Yeah, I think we had a report though. Yeah, we did. EDSD. Uh, yes, we met. Uh, we met because uh, we have a new DDA director, Len Pat. Uh, he came to our meeting, same with the call steward from the chamber, same with the village people. Uh, we do not have a village manager yet, but uh, we're working on an event schedule to go along with, uh, with our development processes in Oxford. But as an economic development committee, uh, I've met and have a contingent offer on the property south of Tractor supply, and uh, it has not yet been so it has not yet closed yet. But everybody wants to get that safety path in right away, and they want to know what's going in there. But it just sold. And that's PDSC. I uh, I got to work with Flynn a bit um, with the land use institute of Bank and say to you guys, it's great that you have him. He is extremely knowledgeable as a planner. He served as a expert one of the go-to's when I would have a question he would be one of the people that would answer it so um, 
I'm pretty thrilled that he's in this community and that the village has him, you know, available. And One of his missions is to get the businesses more involved in the downtown development. I think it's great. That's all I have for economic development. How about for gravel? Nothing to report. Uh, ordinance Review Subcommittee. Okay. Um, I went to the township last night to listen to what the trustees wanted. It's my recollection of the last meeting that I had went through some things that I thought we should look at in terms of ordinance review and nobody thought they were out of line. They were things that would be done in conjunction with our master plan. And I provided a list of them. Yeah, one of them is our sign ordinance. The, the Supreme Court has made a ruling that says if we have content-based sign um, ordinances, we're in violation. And so you know, that needs to be remedied. We can't dictate what the sign can say. And you can have a political sign, and you can have a church sign, and you can't have that. A sign's a sign of sign. I'm going to divert a little bit, because when we were talking about the ZBA, and it goes into it, our sign ordinance is it's very complex. And having it in a, a sheet form, a spreadsheet form, would, would make it a lot easier for everybody to follow. But that's something that's important. We're in violation, we need to fix it. Um, uh, some of the other things that you know, I had talked about, there was a list that I had. Yeah, we said we were yeah. going to add it's a few to that list. Yeah. So. And I, I provide everyone that, basically that's one of them, a check sheet for the, the lot splits. Uh, and a email got sent to me today. Actually, if I remember, I said I wanted to go to the zoning districts. We have the sheets. And let's just, as a planning commission, just list them and see what doesn't sound right. You know, let's spend 20 minutes to just go through it. And this board decided they wanted to do it at the ordinance review level. Because yeah. having it here would be possible not 10 minutes, 20 minutes of our time. And, and this email got sent out that you know, I directed you know, Mr. Curtis to you know, go ask for all these funds. And it's going to be extremely complex and cumbersome. And now we got pulled off of last night's agenda after I went to listen for it. And, and now we have to do a report and substantiation and all this. It's not my understanding what happened at this meeting. We just said, here's some things we want to look at. Let's get some feedback from the board, you know, the board of trustees, to, to find out how they feel about the importance of these things. And so I just don't understand what happened. So again, I, yeah, I my did. list was pretty basic and simple. And, and I want to iterate. You know, the first thing I said, one, remove the use of Christian nomenclature throughout our ordinance. We have to do that. We're in violation if we don't. We can't make decisions based on if they're religious or if they're political. And, and I was at the township board meeting last night, and Sir Curtis was there, and they discussed those type of things. We can't make those decisions. So it's real simple. Let's just fix that. Um, Kelly, can I interject for a second? Yeah. I was no more embarrassed than anybody in that room last night because at the time, we were bringing up the Lakeville water connection and the deferred payments. Yes. And Margie said to me, what about Lakeville? And I said, the Lakeville deferment plan. And all of a sudden, they took 8D and added it in front of the Lakeville. And I voted yes on it. Well, you guys left. And in my comments, I said, who the hell took 8D off there and why? We and were there for that reason. I'll give you the reason right here. An explanation was not provided at that time. However, the discussion within the office is the following procedure will be followed. I was trying to help a fellow trustee understand what the Lakeville water was. Two commissioners, trustees, slipped a D on me and took it off the agenda. I didn't know until all of a sudden they get down to AD and it's gone. Uh, so the comments was, how that, how's that gone? Well, you should have paid attention. It happened so quick at the beginning of the meeting, we didn't even hear. I didn't even hear it because I was talking about the, the key important thing, and I'll just say this, the discussion within the office. 
Yeah, I I saw that. What discussion? I thought we I, worked as a board. How does it go that I get something on the agenda, prepare for the agenda, and it gets pulled off the agenda because there was a conversation in the office? Right. Okay, so I'm very frustrated because I am getting so many complaints from people that say, we have some real concerns about what's oh, the I got ordinance. I, no yeah. one got yelled at more than I did for what I stuck up for last night and this morning. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Okay, so we're not worried about civil rights violations. It's okay. You know, we're going to be sued for civil rights. Your board got lectured last night. No. It doesn't get the petitioner much, but the attorneys make a whole lot. I'm sure yeah. they'll be lining up for it. You know, I just said simply as a board, let's talk about having other options other than 10 per acre for multifamily. Or <clears throat> districts have five and tiered. That's a simple discussion. Well, well, bottom line is they all go through the attorney, they all go through the planner, and they all go through the engineer for review. This is what I was told. So anytime we work on any ordinance, it has to go to those three entities. And when we propose that we're going to work on it, we have to say, how much do we think we're going to spend on it? It doesn't cost this board anything to discuss it. No, we can discuss it, but we can't take it up to them as a recommendation because then they have to turn it over to the planner. We're charged with that duty. They no. don't dictate to this board. You're telling me exactly We're what I carried forward it. for you and stuck my neck on the line. I didn't get any sleep last night. I got hung up on the phone twice today. I would call everything in the world. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is what came out. So let me get this straight. A couple people call and complain that an RV is parked in front of someone's yard. Yeah, people are sitting there thinking, that a compost facility, yes. a junkyard, an auction yard, something I could move right next to them and take over a substantial amount of property, and nobody thinks that's important. I can't argue it's with you. really just driving me bad here because it, there's a lot of acreage for sale. Do we want a dump in Oxford? Because the court's going to say a dump is just the next step from a compost yard. We don't have a leg to stand on. Well, here, I read the email that came through and yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And it's not what maybe, happened. Maybe, 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 we, maybe we approached it incorrectly because last time we came through with the number of hours and all that and they saw what it was going to be. So they gave us a budget finite for what we put forward the first time. So if we want to add items to it, Apparently, we have to go and show the list, what each one is going to be. Put okay. a line item that this has already been budgeted. Everything below here that we want to work on has not been budgeted, but here are the numbers associated with it. And wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about what's been budgeted. I went and pulled. Here's our original list. RVs aren't on here. Street trees aren't on here. Solar's not on here. But all these other things are. But somehow, all those other things got put on. But they didn't get approved at the board. Did you get money for RVs? No. Did you vote yeah. for RVs? I got money? a hole in my chest. I just drank the water and yeah. shot out. <laughs> okay. They didn't. So we've got this double standard going on. I'm bringing a birthday cake to September 20th meeting. You ought to be there. Because <laughs> I have an ordinance that's over a year old. And now the dumpster is in the end dot right away. I even called them to get it out. So my point is, what I'm being told is, wait, if it wasn't on there, we're not doing it. Guess what? You just done two that weren't That's on right. there. So we as a board can respond because we're charged with the master plan and we're charged with this ordinance and we're supposed to make our ordinance match the master plan. We're supposed to be going through a master plan rewrite. And we've got some really legitimate concerns. And this board can sit here and discuss it and put it on the agenda to discuss some of these. And, and do it, and if the board wants to reject, and I've been on this board for 20 years. We've done this regularly without any of this dog and pony show that's going on here. This board used to work on it once a month. We would have a planning meeting and we would discuss these things. We would work on the ordinances year round. And anytime we saw a change, we'd write it up, we'd send it to the township board, and it'd be done. Believe me, for the letter of the law, I've taken each of your requests, Deanna sent a letter, Mike sent a letter and stood in front of him, and I've been beat up severely. And as my job as a trustee liaison, I take this information into the office, and I'm scolded like a high school student. So the, the response is, if you have a concern outside of this, come and see me. 
Okay. We, we as a planning that commission way. have to prioritize it right. and, and say how much each one's going to cost and bring it in and have them approve it. Okay, well here, remove Christian nomenclature. I believe it's important because it, it's kind of the law, but if you guys don't, that's let just, fine. Let me just think out loud on that one before you go farther. Matthew would have to work on it. Jim wouldn't, but the lawyer would. Because last night we talked about soliciting. And they talked about soliciting, and they talked about soliciting, and they, they got civil law confused with constitutional law, but yes, you can solicit. It's your constitutional right. But our ordinance prohibits it, so we're in violation of your constitutional rights. And it took a good 20 minutes of arguing back and forth to get that lawyer to go back for him to convince us to change our ordinance. But then what I heard was, if we're in violation, we need to change it. That's what they said, isn't it? And if we are in violation and we have to change it, we have to put it on the list and judge how many hours we are going to spend by the That's why I said we got to get you here with a lawyer. My other point on this whole thing is, if they want us to bring numbers, last time I remembered, we're not allowed to talk to any of the consultants about going through the bill. So how in the hell, excuse me, yeah. are we supposed to get a quote for any of this stuff if we're not allowed to talk to them? Number of hours. What are you guys are going to figure this I don't out? Know this. I know you're I, smart people. What I got to guess. Figure it out? I can guess. I, I mean, it was probably the same when I was on the board years ago. The bill didn't want anybody talking to the attorney or any consultants unless it went through him. Well, if you're going to figure it out, they're very educated. Well, so, so that one is our book. We don't know how long this is going to take. Number two, zoning districts that allow the, the multiple family. We could say, hey, let's have two other tiers. Let's have a five acre or five per and an eight per. You know, a couple different choices for multiple family instead of just the max. That's not real hard. The planning commission recommends a couple different districts. Do you, have, something to, to work do you have the entire list that well, you have? Well, you have it. No, I don't have it. Of the new one. There's only we seven things on here. I probably threw it away. Three is zoning district classifications. <laughs> you sent it out to the I did. That's what's in the, the, the email. Oh, yeah. You sent that respectable blanket? I've never seen it. Right, I did. And then number two is that about the definitions. Yeah, we talked about that. That's the definition. So it's can, it's can we done. Get? That was the one that was directed to go to the attorney. It's done. There's the definitions right there. Classifications, that's the one I'm talking about, about just a choice. But that's something that's more master plan related. That's a future discussion. Yeah, I want to get this thing so in front of them again, though. So what I need to do is I'm going to take the list. But just hold on. Everyone the, just takes up. Let's just be right reasonable. That one's done. Here we have a schedule of regulations. That's one for the zoning one. That's where you'd say, okay, we're going to allow a couple different types of, of multifamily. That, you know, that's where that change goes in. Four is the permitted and special uses. Here is a copy from our ordinance of each of the district's permitted and special uses. It's right here. That's all there is to go through. And most of these pages are the same, because SF1, 2, and 3 are all the same. Let's put it on the next agenda item to just make a copy of this for everyone, and let's just read it and see what sounds off. Then we can decide what we need to change so we can put a budget to it. But we can't do it unless we identify what we want to change. That's really simple. We should capture one list of all the things we need to identify that should be changed. Then we can put a number to it here and present right. it to the five, five is it's Hunt Country Shop. That's all written up. Strategies to preserve Hunt Creek. And that's a discussion for planning commission. Right, it's not a change in the ordinance. Where is that? You know, we just put that as seven is already done. So that's into item ten, and we'll discuss both then. So we can then the numbers do it. Then right. take the numbers back to the top. But I take offense to an email that says it's going to take an extraordinary amount of time because eighty percent of the stuff on this list is done in terms of what we need to do. The rest is discussion between us. Yeah, but it still has to be reviewed by them to put in our ordinance. Sure. So if it's fifteen minutes, we put fifteen minutes next to it. If we have four of them, that equals an hour. That's all we're looking for. Right. So can you, we do this at the next meeting then? We can put this on the agenda. You're the chairman. I put that under new business that we're going to discuss. Yes. Ordinance changes. Straight yeah. ordinance changes. Right? You know what I'm talking about. 
The next meeting. Outside of that trouble. I just think it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I do too. I do too. Trying to get things done. It's like moving boulders. Uh, uh, but did you have anything else? No, I think it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I check. I'm just really mad about this one. I know. Well, I'm telling you because I put it on the agenda and they took it off. Uh, and I came. It's not even telling me. Uh, safety path committee. We just requested Mr. Sharp to give us our next tier of repairs for the 2018 budget year. We have identified and completed all A's, and some of the A's were completed with road projects and and uh, property owners. So we had a little money to dig into B's, right, Jimmy? Yep. Now we're taking the rest of the B's and putting a figure at it and uh, and requesting budget funds to go after safety path repairs and the B items. Other than that, we've Mr. had Chair. no meetings. Mr. Chair, just a quick question for safety path committee. Yes, sir. Has there been any grants out there that the group has gone after recently? I know there is. I know that our safety path committee does not meet. So the answer to that question is no. So the answer to that question is no at this time. No. Uh, water and sewer. At the budget meeting last night, we allocated funds to design and bid the M24 water main from Minnetonka to Drainer in conjunction with the M24 rebuild in 2019. So we will have that project ready to go when they tear the street up. Along with that, back to the safety pass, they will be installing two safety paths, one on each side of M24. That's all I have. ZBA? And they're paying for it, yes. Okay, because our five ordinance is so cumbersome, um, we met Monday, um, we went straight till 10 o'clock and we had to postpone the meeting because we weren't done. It was a very long meeting. The applicant, which is uh, the Legacy Center, is proposing that a lot of the murals that had been approved as murals now be changed to signs. Um, quite substantial amount. I think it was 2,600 square feet somewhere in there of additional signage um, on top of that. The calculations are extremely difficult. Nobody quite knows what they're actually supposed to get. Um, Matt did a great table. Petitioner did a table. None of the tables matched. Um, extremely complex because it goes by uh, linear feet of front. It goes by how many tenants are in the building. It goes, <laughs> I mean, there's so many variables in that. And how many doorways? Well, we don't have an ordinance that really matches a multi-tenant building like that. So we're asking, how many doors do you have? How many tenants? Well, let's see, you have 24, well, at one point they had 19 tenants and 20 doors or something like that. So now we decided as long as the amount of tenants equals the amount of doors, that's how many signs they'd be able to have times 150 square feet, which is another one we have to extrapolate. It's that's what's making those. You give every tenant 150 square feet with that many tenants. What's that equate to? Well, this, see, this for a sign says. Yeah. But that, that's what our ordinance says. Yeah, we get a roof sign. Well, that's ludicrous. Right? That means the whole building would be a sign. Well, it's no, it's a huge building. I mean, that, that's a huge. Well, that huge just sounds building. like it's way too many square feet to me. I don't well, that's a 15 by 10 sign. Each guy, each. Well, one yeah. of their logos alone is, is 500 square feet. That, that's three. Well, I know, but it's a. Uh, that's just one. He's yeah, got he's got twenty six, I think, on there. So trying to decipher the complexity of the ordinance. Yeah, but he wants to take those all down, you said. He wants to replace a lot of the ones that were the name is called sign sign Sign. So the complexity of it, we just I don't either. And, and part of the thing we're charged with on, on CDA is to look for a lesser variance. So looking at everything and knowing that the ordinance doesn't really match that type of use, so there was a lot of discussion on 
well, we think you should be able to have this, but not that, this, but not that. So that's where so much discussion comes in. When you already start from fuzzy, and then you add in discretional, it creates a very long meaning. So it kind of ended up with, we're going to you know, give you 350 or something square feet. Then you have to get off the minutes. We're going to give you an additional square feet off of our previous variance. We're not going to add any bigger minutes. We're going back to zero, recalculating based on the fact that you have more tenants. And we're giving you this much square feet. Use it wisely. So he has to come back, given the parameters of what he has, and he's going to have to make some some signs smaller and reconfigure. He can't have the big ones and have the other ones too. He's got to give. And so that's where it ended up. So he's going to come back with all that information and see what he can put together in front of us for that. But I'll tell you, having a sign word that's cleaned up would make that easier. I have a joke about two and I have just that front area on the road there. My favorite part, but I can't think about for the rear plus. So, that is? Yeah, that ties back with time words. If we have just yeah. a simple set of ordinances with a little spreadsheet, we would be somewhat easier for us to do. Village Planning Commission? What number of signs per foot did you just say? 150? 100. We, at the Village Council, oh, voted down a 32 foot square sign because they call it sign climb. They have a 24 square foot ordinance, and everybody comes in and asks for 32. Once you have a 32, everybody comes in for 48. Then when you got a 48, you get a 64. And they've got all kinds of applications. The village council voted down the recommendation uh, two weeks ago to go to a 32 square foot sign. And I don't forget what that's in the paper today. For you. Um, in the central business C1 and general business C2, uh, the village council turned down the growth from 24 to 32. They turned it down from 3 to 2. So it's 24 square foot in C1 and C2 now. Yeah, there was a complaint that they were giving it away way too, too easily yeah. and they need to stick on the ground. So um, that and CJ caught uh, Dave Weckel's 32 East Burdick. Uh, street. Uh, Dave wanted to build his apartment up on the third floor and we don't allow a third floor in that PUD so they're going to be uh, coming back the 19th and removing the third floor. How did they fix that? How do they fix the motion? They have to go back and reverse the motion. Motion to reconsider or? Um, it, it's a motion to readopt the original PUD because we made a motion to change the PUD to adopt the third floor apartment. Now we have to go back and rescind that motion and go back to the original PUD of two floors. So that's because the they want the office in there, right? They want an office and then a level of apartments. You can't have an office right, and two levels of apartments. He did retail and residential, he could do it. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, planner reports. Still have the master plan, remember that. So I'd like to get that started up again. We're almost there, so I'd like to get a complete draft ready to go. Um, hopefully, I'll put it on the agenda for next meeting if we're running late. You know, we have some stuff on the agenda beforehand. But I just remind you that we still have that going on, and I'll have some stuff for you for the next meeting. Okay. the master plan, what components of all the citizen input have been integrated with the master plan? Sorry, what components of all the citizen comments and the input that we've gotten from the community has been integrated into the master plan, and in what way has it been done? Well, it's in, it's integrated in turn in that it's reviewed by you, and it's your job to look at those comments and review the goals and the strategies and see if anything needs to be changed, and then direct me as to where those changes need to be made. So, in terms of that, I, I'm leaving that up to you because as the Being like adding multiple choices for multifamily would be one of those things. Yeah. And yeah. reviewing kind of special yeah. uses that might help like strengthen that. that master plan, that would be part of that, right? I guess. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I think, yeah, and like you said, a lot of the, the uh, your potential zoning amendments do interlap and are supposed to be addressed in the master plan. So that would be the, the place that we start. 
start off with it. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, I don't want to, to let this fall behind and let's, let's finish it. So. And, and part of what was in that letter that was taken out of context about the zoning changes for changes for the master plan, like buffering, those comments were related to master plan to better define buffering and to better define ways to preserve pine yeah. country. And a lot of a lot of what master plan thing, right. not working. Well, exactly. A lot of what you, a lot of the proposed amendments, what you're saying, are very important. It's really what it comes down to is the the budgeting and the the, the nitty gritty details that are need to be worked out. Uh, they're, they're very good ideas and they need to be addressed. It's just a matter of figuring out how the, the payment and the budgeting and all those uh, those necessary but pesky items are going to be addressed. Mr. Sure. As uh, Commissioner Curtis noted, the Township Board did approve for us to move forward with the design of the water main along M24. Um, and just to follow up a little bit, we're having a meeting with them that on Tuesday, Tuesday the 19th. Uh, to continue the, I guess, the, the, the progress, you know, the development of that corridor. We're going to get some more information from them. Uh, they've done some studies and they have their consultants, so we're going to get an update on what they're proposing um, in the township portion of M24 for the 2019 construction. What size main is it? 12 inch. 12 inch. West side. From that's what's on the uh, east side now. When there's no, nothing on the east side. There's nothing what, in that what, area. What, what went in front of Hubbard? The uh, spring place. It's on, the, it's on the west side. Right? It's on the west side. Oh, it's on the west side. There's nothing on the east side. Village water does Big Boy and Collier Lanes and west side. When does it sell? The actual construction through uh, Oxford begin in 2019. Spring? Yes. I would assume so. I mean, that's their yeah. they're not schedule right now, but. So, what is their projected time frame from start to finish? 2019. 2019. <laughs> 2019. January 2019? February? Can't tell you. Right. They never reference a month. They don't have an actual schedule from that. They, don't, they never reference a month. So, it's going to take more than six months? Yeah. It could you take don't know. two, it could take ten. We don't know. When would they give you a time frame? Probably January of 2019. <laughs> we should have something in uh, 2018. I'm not being facetious. I'm telling you what they tell us. Right. They don't have They're supposed to have all the design work complete by January of 2018 yeah. so that they can have put all their packages together and Contract get things out to October. bid. And, yeah, I think by October of 2018. They should have a contractor on board and have all their schedule. So we should know by the beginning of 2019 what the schedule is. And then they're still working on grants for the streetscape in the village. And I just continue to bring this up because if you have comments, please get that. I mean, this meeting that we're having on Tuesday, I mean, it's we're getting to a point now where any comments that come in are not going to be listened to. They've already heard what they need to and they're going to move forward. They're moving forward with their design. So if there's anything that, you know, safety-wise or, or something, then we need to know now so we can try to bring it to their attention and get it included, possibly. I mean, I get to get it off to them. One of the things I'm bringing to is we attended an Oakland County planners meeting, and we went in, uh, to Leader Dogs for the Blind. We're going to recommend the downtown authority go after ADA compliant uh, signals, which say 10, 9, 8, 7, oh, right, right. You know, it's, 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 it's an upgrade to a signal. Now, who's going to pay for it? So we have to work those things out. So once we have a final plan, I guess you'd say, or more, right now it's very conceptual still. They're still doing all their due diligence, but once we have a plan, I'll definitely bring it back so that this commission can see what is being planned for that corridor. This agenda has got what realignment and I mean, they're even realigning 24 to straighten it out. Yeah, we have some general ideas, but we haven't seen. We voiced our yeah. our opinions. Needed a, a turn lane um, from Drainer Road up to Minnetonka. Um, yeah, up to Minnetonka there, and also I believe that there's a the turn lane, the left turn lane. You mean? Yeah. Correct. So there'll be five lanes there now. Yeah. So you keep the two and add a, a turn lane in there. As the chief can attest to there's a lot of accidents by the gas station at Oakdale, you know, oh, yeah. and, and in that area uh, by the hardware store and so forth. And then also I believe um, 
at our last meeting with them, they sounded pretty uh, positive. positive of extending the median south from where the tractor supply is. Yeah. Sorry, not, sorry, sorry, not sorry, not adding, sorry, not the median. Adding a turn lane in that area, so there would be a turn lane to get into Gateway Drive and to the McLaren Health also. So about, hopefully we'll know more about that next Tuesday. And I'll continue to keep you Why couldn't they put a roundabout right in front of the, near the hardware store? Because right? there's so many going on Baldwin Road, they don't they have no room for roundabouts in this county. They ran out of roundabouts. <laughs> <laughs> that would eliminate the need for a left turn lane. Somebody could just go around and then if they had to go into the oh, building, in the middle of that they could go around the roundabout. The county is in favor of roundabouts, as you can well see, but MDOT, MDOT is not generally in favor of that because of the truck turning radii and the size of roundabout that would be necessary to get up the, you know, all the semi trucks. Well, I never thought about the semis, they have to go through there. Yeah. Yeah, so MDOT is not a, a gigantic proponent of the roundabouts because it's not just vehicular traffic, they're looking at the big truck traffic. Okay. With that, we've come to item number 13. I want to thank everyone for coming. It's been a while since we've all been here. Oh, the complete uh, the complete crew. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I appreciate everyone's hard work tonight. And with that, we are adjourned.